Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner and I have a special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your secret identity to the masses? Hey everybody, I'm Robbie Bryan, a filmmaker and uh, getting ready to do a big movie called Black Hat that um, celebrates the world of anime, manga, and cosplay. Now, we're very excited to have you on. A lot of our friends actually messaged us to get you onto the show, which we found uh, we always love when people do that, you know? <laughs> I'm excited about that, that there's actually fans out there ready that want, want to see the movie and talk to me, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Well, now, for, so the fans know you a little bit more. Obviously, you know, you don't uh, just uh, step into a studio and start writing and directing. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to get into something like that. So what got you onto that career path? I was actually um, going to college for business and, and also as a lawyer. And then, um, but I'd always done plays in school. I was like a baseball player and I loved to do plays. And then my senior year in college, I was doing a play and called Godspell. And um, I made a lady who was a widower whose husband had passed, a widow whose uh, husband had passed away, um, came up to me afterwards and said that I made her laugh for the first time since her husband had passed away. And I was like blown away on the floor and I was like, wow, I think this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I kind of gave up those college um, things and became an actor for about 10 years and then said, you know what, I like to write and I think I'd like to storytell more. So I kind of switched over to making films and that's kind of where we are today. That's a lot of shifts, but I have to say that's that's a major career change from lawyer to actor. <laughs> I don't think I was ever really meant, I think the lawyer thing was more of mom and dad's dreams than it ever was mine. So um, I think I was sort of going with the flow and when it came to that um, business, yeah, a little bit. Uh, and it's good to have a business sense even in this industry because it is, you know, it's show business. So I love to create more than anything, but if nobody ever sees the film what's the or, the, or whatever I'm creating, what's the point of it? So you also have to have them a mind for business, but there's no doubt that the artist in me is is the, is the driving force in who I am. Well, I can understand that. I mean, my mom still wants me to go to college for like air traffic control, and I've never shown any interest in planes, but hey. You know. <laughs> That's really interesting. Of all the professions, I've never, was was your, is a family member had done that before? Or is that just my, some... my mom went to college to become a stewardess, you know, a flight attendant, and oh. I guess she she never finished because she had me, and maybe, maybe that has something to do with it. I've never really thought about it before. <laughs> She's just like, you get to work with computers. You're good at that. You'll get it coming from the woman who can't program her VCR. So <laughs> and, and rumor has it that there's a lot of other professions that involve computers. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I hear that. So you could probably find something to do with your computer love and skills. Well, hey, I got the radio thing going on with the computer, so I think I'm all set. <laughs> I think you're doing it. I think you've headed on the right path. I think this is going to be really cool for you. For sure. <laughs> Well, now, obviously, you've had it on the right path as well because you're working on a project that's gotten a lot of traction and a lot of attention. Would you like to tell the listeners about that? Yeah, it's, you know, I've been making films for 15 years and nothing has sort of gotten more excited and stoked than the film by, by far. It's called Black Hat, um, hat like you wear on your head. Sometimes I say it fast and it sounds it's like Black Cat, but it's Black Hat. Um, and it's about a 16-year-old girl who's, uh, very alternative, loves anime, manga, cosplay, and the musical group Slipknot, and she's bullied at school sometimes, but she has a dream, and, and her dream is to get to this huge uh, anime convention where her favorite um, anime director, Shinichiro Watanabe, is going to turn one amateur uh, manga comic into an anime. So nobody believes in her dreams, so she ends up kidnapping her strange grandfather and going on a crazy trip across country to get to the convention in time to meet him. I, I can't remember the last story I've, you know, read or watched that had a, a family member kidnapping their grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's kind of all in fun. People are always, you know, and, and, and the producer, you know, and certain people are like, she's kidnapping someone. I go, yeah, but the guy's, you know, he's in a nursing home basically sitting around. It's not like, you know, we kidnapping her for bad things. So it's it's kind of, she never got to really meet him. And it's it's kind of like an interesting kind of, sidebar they get to know each other on the road trip besides all the craziness that ensues you know trying to get to a convention like that and she's underage so she doesn't even have a driver's license then she stole she had basically um takes her sister's car without permission so she it's kind of like what would you do if, if your dream was there and there and everybody else was trying to stop 
stop you from doing it? How far would you, would you go without hurting somebody? Obviously, it's, nobody's getting hurt by this uh, thing. How far would you go to get your big dream? Well, now, what inspired you to make a film like this? Because it's a really interesting concept. And, you know, with the involvement of anime, I don't think most people who would have a story like this would be like, yes, it has to be an anime convention. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a really interesting story. I was, I got a phone call from this producer, film producer who produced um, Phone Booth with uh, Colin Farrell. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm doing a play with this girl and she's 15, 16 years old. And her father wants to do uh, an independent movie with her as the lead. He'll put up money. Um, do you have any scripts like that are not, nothing of a like sexual nature. I only wanted to be like very uh, kind of a wholesome film with a relation, but a relationship maybe with a family member. And I never had a grandfather in my life. So the grandfather relationships always key. So I was like, yeah, I want to make it about a grandfather. So it'll be the girl and the grandfather. And, uh, but you know, what am I going to write about? And usually when I go for my inspiration, I try to go on the internet and say, uh, and just have something kind of jump up in me. And I, I saw this, thing about anime and I, I, to be quite honest three years ago I knew very little to nothing about it and I just looked at it and I was like what a cool kind of fresh thing and um I said I have to learn more about this so I started I live in New Jersey I was starting to I googled like cl anime clubs I'm like where can I go talk to some people that are into this and find out more about it and I found the Cheshire Anime Club in Connecticut and I called up the lady that ran it every she was a teacher and she ran it every third um Friday after school in the library and they would show anime and have Pocky sticks and Ramune and all kinds of stuff and just like just celebrate anime and I interviewed them for weeks and weeks and weeks and then I started going to anime conventions and seeing all the cosplay and the, the artistic things that these kids did and the lengths they went to create these elaborate cosplay and how shy they were like in their personal life but when they got together they just felt the sense of community and I was just like what an amazing world and I have to talk about this and I have to tell people and I had to incorporate it into the story and so it became about getting to the anime um, convention. Well now I have to wonder because even when I have staff who are really into anime and they go to their first convention you know under us they're like oh my god it's like Disneyland or something so <laughs> for you as, as someone who wasn't introduced into anime and maybe didn't know what to expect how was that experience going to your first convention? It was overwhelming, but overwhelmingly cool. You know, it was like, I still, you know, I'm, I'm a little older than probably a lot of the fans of, of this. And although it's amazing, you know, at the convention, one of my favorite stories is like, I saw this 19 year old, 20 year old kid with this like 60 year old man. And I was sort of like, wow, what's that all about? And they were both dressed in like steampunk. And I was like, I was, I, I walked up to him, like, well, would you mind asking me like what the relationship is and what's going on here? And he, and he was a college professor of medicine. He goes, yeah, this is my son. And he's like, he loves this stuff. And I want to bond with him. So we go to conventions all the time. So I was like, I just I just found it to be so creative and so amazing. And, and as a slightly older person, I still love to throw Halloween parties. So getting dressed up is still lots of fun anyway. But it's just, you know, it's knowing that it was a Halloween and, and American superhero type stuff but taken to like that next level of because the stories are so inventive and creative and the costumes are cosplay are so elaborate and wonderful. Hey, I wish there were older fans like of anime. I feel like every time I go to a convention, the crowd just gets younger and younger and I'm like getting older and I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> well, you know, it, it's like anything else. You know, I think maybe there's people that are still closet anime fans, but it's just, you know, once you get to a certain age, it's not necessarily cool to say yeah i went to an anime convention in their mind um which is a shame because you know and one of the points of this movie is like just be who you are you know and don't worry about what you're supposed to be worry about what makes you happy and and you know that's such an important message in this movie there's a big anti-bullying message in the movie so it's a shame that people quote unquote outgrow anime and manga because it, at the end of the day it's storytelling it's beautifully made stories and if you go to comic cons there's a bunch of older people running around if you know basically you know still dressing up in batman costumes so what's the difference in doing that and getting dressed up in you know in death note or or you know a great you know great characters from anime 
No, I can totally understand. So, you know, you've done your research and everything else, but who else is on board with the project? Because obviously it can't just be you. <laughs> no, and, and no film, no feature film can be made. And this is the biggest one our company's ever done. So there's a lot of people involved. The problem is that is that when you first start um, to put a movie together, you don't have any money to pay people. So, and, and the bigger professionals that you're dealing with, they have to pay their rent and they have to take paying jobs. So somebody has to be the driving force to, to get it off the ground. But when we started our Facebook page, I saw, I saw like instantly how passionate the fans are. And then slowly I started to build a community of people who were interested, who maybe can't put in the time that I'm putting in now, but can still, when I call them up and say, hey, I want to get, um, you know, Maseo Mariyama to do the 11 minutes of anime in the movie, how can I get in touch with them? That person is able to do that. Or Shinichiro Watanabe to be the, the, the character that anime, that, um, that Dandy tries to, uh, tries to chase down. How am I going to get in touch with him? And so you start to bring people into the project on a smaller basis that they don't have to give, you know, 12 hours a day to, but they can still, hey, go make the call for me or make this connection for me. And then I follow up and do what I have to do. I actually have to wonder when you approached uh, Murayama, what was his reaction to the entire project? <laughs> well, and it's really funny The um, you know, he obviously he speaks primarily Japanese, very little English. So I had to find a Japan, one of our producers, two of our producers actually are Japanese. Um, so that, so I didn't get the immediate, like, what do you think of this? But I think that everyone's kind of excited about the fact that we are going to make a movie about this and hopefully it's going to be a really successful movie that only helps the industry um but what was really cool is i was at, i went to otakon this year in baltimore and um he was going to be there so through my contacts i set up a meeting with him um i had a japanese interpreter and he had an english speaking interpreter for me so it was like the four of us and we set up a camera crew and we met for like a half hour just to get to know each other a little bit better but He's been very supportive of, of what we're going on. And at this point, just like any actor in the movie, we, you know, as soon as we're financed, we can lock them in officially and, uh, and you know, we'll make an incredible movie. I, I always have an interesting experience when I'm interviewing Japanese guests before. I've actually gotten the chance to talk with him before for an interview and as well as one of his associates. Uh, and. Yeah trying to get like a hint of like how they feel when you're talking through it, another person can be really difficult. So I always have to kind of stay American, if that mm -hmm. makes sense, yep. and continue to, you know, like make jokes and, and try and laugh with them to like lighten the mood and, and make it enjoyable for everybody because I know that it's it can be such a serious thing when you're talking with someone straight from Japan on a project. <laughs> yeah, no, and you just hit the nail on the head, Jackie, because it's um you know, first and foremost, they're very, you know, the Japanese culture is all about respect. So you're all, always worrying and making sure you don't say the wrong thing or it gets misinterpreted in the translation and you're offending them. So I found the same thing that you found. Like my greatest moments in the interview was when he started busting out laughing and I was like, all right, at least we're making some connection because if he hated me or hated the film, I don't think we would have gotten that kind of chuckle out of him. Um, but he was, you know, very, very gracious, took pictures, shook hands, said he really wanted to do it. So um, it's an intimidating thing, like you said, when you can't verbally, verbally communicate with somebody directly and you have to sort of look into their eyes and, and gauge their reaction as to whether you're making a positive impact or whether things are going not so swimmingly. You've also got some amazing actors on the film as well. In fact, um, you have an actress who is in Silent Hill, and I know a lot of the game fans out there would really love to hear about your cast that you have in mind. Well, our, our lead actress is Jodel Furland, who you just referenced from Silent Hill. Um, and that was, you know, it was really, really great. When, whenever you put a project together, you know, there's a catch-22 that you try to attach, you know, a, a name actor or actress to the project. And you have to go through their agents unless you happen to know them personally. And the agents don't really want to deal with you until you have the money. Mm -hmm. um, because, first of all, you know, they don't, their time is valuable and your project may never get made. Second of all, they don't want to get their client excited about it. And then you don't get it made and then they get disappointed. Um, and, but the, the other side of that is when you go to the money people, they say, well, what actors do you have attached? So you're like, well, 
If you would say yes, then they would say yes, and we go to the other one. If you would say yes, they would say yes. A domino effect. <laughs> yeah, but we were really fortunate in that um, ICM, which is a huge talent agency in Hollywood, caught wind of the fact that we, and through, a, again, another contact, a casting person out in L.A. who had a relationship with someone at ICM sort of brought us up to them, and then they saw at the time our Facebook fan page had like 30,000 people already, and they were like, wow, this, you know, you really have 30,000 people and no actors and you haven't shot a trailer. And actually we're up to 235,000 fans on, with the same, although now we have Joe Dell. But we walked up to ICM. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So when you try to put a, a project together, you start to envision as the writer, director, who you want um, in to play Dandy, who's the main character, who you want to play the grandfather who she kidnaps. And over the course of like six months to a year, I'd always have a list of like 10 actresses. And the common factor through the whole thing was like every three months I'd make a new list. There'd be, you know, some actresses would stay on the list, some would leave, but Joe Dell was always on the list. So, um, so it was clear that in my heart that I wanted Joe Dell and, and she got the script. We were able to get it to her agent and um, she said she wanted to do it. And she's done a little video for us, like talking about the, vid the movie. So that was amazing. So she's going to play Dandy, um, unless we don't get the movie in like five years and she can't play 16 years old anymore. <laughs> but, but uh, and um, we are talking to, the, uh, for the grandfather role, we're talking to Michael Gambone, who um, a lot of your fans may know as Dumbledore and Harry Potter. Um, so I'd be really excited. You know, you say to yourself, what 70 year old man are anime fans and fans who are somewhere between 14 and 25, let's say, you know, what, who would they be excited about some 70 year old actor? Well, I was like, Dumbledore would be pretty cool in terms of that. So, um, so we're really hoping that that works out too. And, you know, Shinichiro Watanabe is going to play the, the guy and we're talking to some, to some other really cool people to do sort of cameos. We have Jesse Pridemore, who's a fairly famous cosplayer that's going to do a cameo in the movie. And we're talking to one other person that I don't want to mention yet in case we don't get her, but um, there's going to be a lot of kind of interesting, exciting people for you guys to see. Well, now, for the fans who want to find out more information or where they can help make the film a reality, where can they go for that? We have a lot of stuff right now. We have um, most films today are using crowdfunding to get all a part of their financing, and we're no different. We have a campaign going. A lot of people know Kickstarter and Indiegogo. We have a, uh, we have a thing called Seed and Spark. Seed like a seed and spark like sparking something exciting dot com and we have 11 days left in our campaign so we have tremendously fun rewards like skyping with stars on the set once we're shooting naming a character after somebody um all kinds of fun rewards starting from 15 dollars going all the way up to crazy numbers you know to be a, a executive producer um, but if you guys can go there and support this, I, I'm trying to highlight your world. I'm trying to be a part of your world. Um, that would be really cool. If you want to find out a ton more about the movie, go to blackhatmovie.com, uh, blackhatmovie.com. And, um, and then our Facebook page is Black Hat Anime. Um, our Twitter is at Black Hat Anime. So a lot of different places to sort of check out stuff, see videos, become part of what we're doing. Well, now we're going to give the fans out there a chance to look over all of that information while we take a very short break here on 91.8 The Fan. But don't go anywhere because our special guest isn't. So keep it tuned to your favorite station where we play everything you want and nothing you don't. Hey everybody out there, you're still tuned to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner and my special guest is still here, alive and breathing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, we were talking a little bit behind the scenes and I, I really want to touch on this subject because I realize it's very important to the film and I think it's important for a lot of the listeners out there, even though they don't know the information yet. But you're using the film as sort of a way to remember somebody as well. Could you elaborate a little bit? Um, yeah, this is something that's become so special and near and dear and um, heartwarming to me. Basically what happened was um, two weeks ago, through the Seed and Spark campaign where you donate and everything, um, an old high school friend who I hadn't seen in many, I don't want to age myself, but many years, um, donated uh, $500. And for $500, which was amazing, and $500 basically, the reward for that is you get to name 
a character or if you want to name like a, a, a restaurant movie or some place, you can name, you got to name a character after whoever you want. So she said, I know this um, family in Louisiana, which is where we're going to be shooting, um, where this young girl, Cassie England, suffers from, suffers from this really bad um, skin disease and passed away last week which was so sad. She was 16 years old and she was looking forward to celebrating her 17th birthday at um, New Orleans Comic Con this past weekend. Um, she said, would you name it after Cassie? Um, and I said, and I was immediately blown away and touched. And I said, listen, Jen, um, I don't know if we're going to raise enough money for this movie to get for you to get this reward um, because we're running out of time and we still have a, a, a ways to go. I said, but tonight I'm going to go to my computer, and the best friend in the movie is going to be called Cassie England, and um, her trademark was she used to wear these um, bunny ear, uh, these cat ears rather, and um, so in the comeuppance part of the movie, in the anime portion of the movie, I'm going to have her when she gets her revenge, the character put a tiara on her head with the um, with the cat ears, and then um, and then basically at the end of the movie we'll show her picture and our manga artist created an anime version of, uh, of Cassie, which is a dead ringer, um, and, we'll, and then it'll fade into that, and we'll really get to honor her memory. So unbeknownst to me, she went back to the father and told her the whole story, and I guess he got really emotional, and he contacted me and said, I really, really, really want to make this film made. My daughter Cassie, um, you know, just passed away, and I, I um, she, she was in pain for her whole life, but the one thing she loved was anime cosplay and just being herself and she would have loved this more than anything in the whole world so what can i do to help and he's like come down he's like let's do a fundraiser at comic-con in new orleans come down in two weeks and, uh, and and we'll do whatever we have to do and we went down we raised a little bit of money but wdsu which is the nbc affiliate um down there did a huge story on it it's a beautiful story i hope you guys can get a link so you can see it yourself and then the new york daily news picked that up just interviewed today and i'm just looking over at my uh my uh phone and and i just saw logan wants somebody else wants to do an interview so it's an amazing story about a girl who had such a short life and such a big heart and uh, i i want nothing more to honor you know her in the film and her father and, and to make this a little bit better for her father logan so the film which i passionately wanted to make for you guys anyway as anime fans and to highlight your world has sort of taken another leap in, in terms of how badly I want to get this made. And hopefully you guys will, you know, want to see as well. Well, I think that's really honorable that you would, you know, go to those lengths. And that I think it's kind of one of those, you know, almost Disney moment stories that you were able to connect with the father that way too, because I'm sure that that has kind of given him hope in a way, if that makes sense. Well, what it, it told one of the things like when he first called me and I was like he was like what can I do how how can I post and I was like Logan um your daughter just passed away seven days ago like forget about a movie it's it's just a movie like grieve your daughter and he's like you don't understand all I do is pace back and forth since she died you know what do I do now what, now I can throw myself into your movie and into honoring my daughter and to seeing her immortalized when I know that she wants that more than would have wanted that more than anything in the whole world so every time I'm like worried like are we exploiting the situation is it messed up Logan are you sure about this he's always the one that's like are you kidding me we have to do this what can we he's like so passionate about wanting to honor his little girl it, it like brings tears to my eyes it is really touching and I I hate to be the downer of, of the conversation but you know are you? Do you guys have any backup plans just in case you guys don't raise the amount that you're looking for? Um, I mean, you know what? I, I never quit. Um, the good news is I've never tried to make a movie that didn't get made. Um, there are, you know, this was set up perfectly that if we hit our goal um, for Seed and Spark, we had a company that said if you if you can raise the 10 percent, we'll put up the 90 percent. So that was the most direct route. But I also have two other sources that may be able to finance the movie. So there's no way I'm going to say if we don't, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that out there and put the pressure on all you guys who I want to donate so bad to say if you don't do this, it'll never happen because it's become too special and important right now between what I can do for Cassie and her family, between what I'm, we're going to do with teen bullying, 
and, and setting up uh, that when the movie's done, um, a, a website and a Skype kind of club where anybody who feels like they have nowhere else to go, like they're hopeless, like their lives are, you know, so sad they don't know who to talk to, so they'll have someone to talk to. And plus, it's to make a movie about this ridiculously cool world of anime and manga, like there's no way my, I won't rest until I get this movie made. So I'll find a way. But you guys can make it easier for me if you donate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it shows the fans too that you have the determination and the loyalty to the, to the project because you know you don't want to quit. And so I think they respect that a lot. I, I hope so, and and I do. I, I'm making that, you know, I will make that pledge that Black Hat will be a reality no matter what. Um, it's just there's too much gone for it, and and in the past three weeks, with all the attention because of Cassie and because of some of, of this other stuff, it really has taken a life on its own. So we we basically just um, in the last two weeks won um, won Indie Wire, which is a big big um, entertainment magazine's project of the month, and we're eligible for project of the year. And just for project of the month, we get to meet with Tribeca Film Institute, so we get to um, they could champion the projects, and if they do, it'll find a way to get made for sure. So there's so many different ways. I literally wake up first thing in the morning and go to bed saying, what do I got to do to move Black Hat forward one more second so I can get this movie out to you guys? So, you know, yes, if, if it's passion that's going to get us there, you will see this movie sooner than later. Well, for the fans out there that might not be sold on it yet, which I can't believe that, but just in case, uh, could you talk a little bit more about the perks for donating? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, fit, um, I don't have the exact thing in front of me, which shame on me for not, <laughs> excuse me, happening. But I know like fifteen dollars, you get, um, you get like uh, all kinds of information that'll be sent to you that nobody else is going to get to. Then I think you move up to twenty-five dollar level, and you get like some. Um, it's either twenty-five or fifty. There's a twenty-five level and a fifty. One of them is that you get our anime artist to draw, like uh, one, you get two sketches from Dandy's manga, autographed digital copies of that, plus the perk before it, $100 you get into the credits as well. And so like every level uh, of the first four or five levels, like if you do the you do the $100 thing, you get the 50, 75, 50 and $25 perk as well. If you do the 50, you get the 25. And then there's stuff like you get to go to private screening for 200, um, I think it's two hundred dollars is going to be a private screening before um, we shoot the movie. I mean, before the movie's released, after we do um, after we do like a rough cut, you get a private screening with the some of the cast and crew where you can literally get your input in the movie and say, "I love this. Why don't you guys should change this?" Blah 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 blah. So that that's really cool. And then you know it keeps going up. Again, I mentioned the five hundred dollar level where um, where basically. Uh, you get um, you get to name a character after yourself, and then as it goes up, you can be an extra, in the, a featured extra in the movie, where you really, you know, you'll be next to Joe Dell, or you'll be next to Michael, or you'll be like featured by yourself um, in the movie. There's so many different things. Skyping on set, a three-hour Skype when we're filming, where the cast will come up to you and basically say, have a conversation for three hours in between takes and talk to you personally on your Skype. So. So many different kind of original and fun things, and I'm probably missing a few other. But if you go to seedandspark.com and click on Black Hat, you'll see the rest of the rewards as well. Well, now, since we're nearing the end of this interview, I was wondering if you'd be willing to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. I would love to be part of a 91.8 tradition. <laughs> Basically, we ask if you'd be willing to do a radio bump for us, whether you're a voice actor or not. <laughs> I most definitely am not a voiceover actor, but I'm happy to do this. We basically ask if you'd be willing to say, hello, my name is, you insert your name, I do this, you can say you're a director, or you can, you know, reference Black Hat, whatever works best, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Sounds great. So whenever you're ready, we're recording. Hey, I'm Robbie Bryan, the writer-director for the new upcoming anime-based film Black Cat, and you're tuned in to 91.8. The fan. See, that wasn't so hard. I think you should do that voice acting gig. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> now, is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? Any words of wisdom, dating advice, anything we missed? Oh, dating advice. <laughs> yeah. um, if you're a girl, make sure the guy pays. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and you're worth it. You're worth it. And if he really cares about you, he should be able to buy you at least a decent meal. Um, getting back to um, just, you know what? 
it's kind of the theme of the movie, if I want to say anything. Like, just be yourself and just do, you know, just do what makes you happy. Um, and especially if you're younger, and if you're going through the bullying thing, like, I remember being in high school every day of the week. Um, see, every day seemed like the most important day that I'll ever have. And when it went bad, like, everything was going to go wrong. And it's like, high school, junior high school is the beginning of your life. It's never the end of your life. So always just, like, try to be yourself. Try to do the best you can and just know that you have the whole rest of your life to do amazing things and um, just take it one day at a time and don't be so hard on yourself. Well, I, I like hearing things like that. I feel like every everybody is bullied at one point in their life, whether it's severe, whether it's slight. I feel like you grow up with it. And uh, for a lot of people, it can really be detrimental to their growth. So I think it's a, it's a good message to uh, share with people. Yeah, and, you know, having been through all that in police, I, I was, you know, beaten up sometimes physically and sometimes emotionally as much, you know, when I was a kid. And here I am making movies and I have the most amazing life and you guys will too. So just hang in there, really. And just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. And don't, don't let the nasty stuff take, bring it down. Hey, I got bullied back in elementary school and I halfway into middle school and now I'm talking with awesome people like you. So my life's pretty good. <laughs> I'm talk I'm the one that gets to talk to awesome people like you and I really appreciate your time and you should be really proud of what you're doing because you're kicking booty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and for any of the listeners out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret, you can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled to 918thefan.com and your ears tuned to 91.8 the fan, where we play everything you want and nothing you don't. <laughs>